Welcome to the Saki Mori Research Lab of Universal Spirit. Thank you very much for your visit. Last time, we examined the person who was the reincarnation of Mithraya Bodhisattva in the 1st century BC, Jeshuben Pandira of the Essene sect, who had been preparing for the birth of Jesus Christ. This time, we would like to examine the features of salvation when Mithraya Bodhisattva, called the future Buddha, became a Buddha. One of the things that Rudolf Steiner emphasized most among the characteristics of this Mithraya Bodhisattva, who will become a Buddha in the future, was that this Bodhisattva has the power of words that bring good. About this, Steiner himself said as follows. Today, by words of unimaginable power, Mithraya Buddha as a transformed Bodhisattva will reveal the great secret of existence. Mithraya's teachings are not just teachings, they will pour moral impulses into the human soul. Such words cannot yet be spoken by the throat of today's human beings. Such words exist in the spiritual world now. The content of today's spiritual science is no different from the wisdom of the East taught by the Bodhisattva, the son of King Jofun, when he became a Buddha. It is said that the work of the next Buddha is to realize the teachings preached by Shakyamuni. This Bodhisattva will convey the light of wisdom revealing the true Christ to the whole world. The Bodhisattva who incarnated in Jeshu Ben Bandera became a great teacher of the Christ impulse. Eastern mysticism calls this Bodhisattva, who will become Mithraya Buddha in the future, the one who brings good. The words spoken by Mithraya Buddha have spiritual power, and they evoke moral impulses in those who hear them. Therefore, in order to understand the meaning of these unimaginably powerful words, let's first deepen our understanding of what words mean to humans. And in the spiritual interpretation of these words, we can find many commonalities between Steiner and Anasaburo Degachi. Rudolf Steiner explains the interpretation of vowels and consonants in the words spoken by humans using Western expressions. He describes the vowels A, I, U, E, O as having a spiritual nature, while consonants are considered material. According to Steiner, the soul is expressed through vowels, and when transitioning to higher spiritual dimensions, consonants fade away, leaving only the cosmic song sung by vowels. He states, on earth, we can speak and sing using air as a medium. The spiritual soul aspect of sound naturally belongs to the supersensible world. Those living within the air are the physical aspect of sound. It is not surprising that what comes from earth is lacking in the spiritual world. Earthly consonants are absent. When ascending to the spiritual world, the spiritual content of vowels is accepted. Sound is inwardly inspired. Instead of being externally shaped through consonants, sound is inwardly imbued with soul. Furthermore, Steiner suggests that after death, humans are enveloped by uplifted sounds and live within songs. This occurs because the souls of the deceased exist within the musical elements of language, which are originally sound elements. In this sense, death represents a transition from earth to the celestial realms. The souls of the departed perceive the spiritual world of beings everywhere, rather than material starlight. Regarding the statement those living within the air are the physical aspect of sound, it can be interpreted similarly to how our bodies house spirits. Just as our bodies contain spirits, the sounds and vibrations of language also have an outer appearance while harboring inner spiritual essence. In summary, in the material realm, appearance equals words slash sound slash vibrations. In the spiritual realm, inner essence equals spirit. In Japan, the concept that words have spirits has long been recognized and is referred to as kodadama, meaning the soul of words or the soul of language. Steiner applied this wisdom of words through eurythmy in arts, education, and healing. Additionally, Steiner discusses cosmic acoustics. When observing Aries, we receive a soul vowel impression. Perhaps Saturn lies behind Aries, providing this soul vowel impression. Within the soul vowel sounds emanating from Saturn into cosmic space, the soul spiritual consonant elements of Aries or Taurus exist. Planets sing through vowels within cosmic space, while stars resonate with consonants, permeating the planetary realm with their soul. 
If we were to simply visualize this principle, it might be expressed as follows. In the horoscope of astrology, there are 12 constellations with the strings of consonants stretched across them. When the vowels of the planets pass through, they strum the strings of the constellations, playing a cosmic symphony like a music box. Let's proceed with the words of Steiner in mind. On the other hand, Anasaburo Degachi learned the soul of words Kotodama from his grandmother from a young age, advocated Oomoto Kotodama studies himself, and actually mastered the use of the soul of words, making him one of the most famous people in Japan. Anasaburo Degachi said the following. In this vast universe, the five major vowels of A, O, U, E, I, are constantly ringing and never cease to roar. And from these vowels, the sound of 75 voices is constantly emitted, intertwining in various ways, like music, like the voice of birds, like the sound of insects in the autumn field. This subtle voice is the echo of the progress of heaven and earth, and by this, all things in the universe are being nurtured and developed. The way means to be filled. The universe is filled with the soul of words. That is, even if one machine moves, it emits a tremendous sound, and because this universe is also making a great rotation, it is always emitting a tremendous sound. That is, the five major vowels of A, O, U, E, I are constantly ringing. Sound is also a kind of word. What is consciously uttered is a word, and what is unconsciously uttered is a sound. Anyway, words are the way and God. Dot. In the universe, the five major vowels of A, O, U, E, I are constantly ringing, but if people utter incorrect words, this will become muddy, so always offer a Shinto prayer to adjust the musical scale. Always offer a Shinto prayer. You don't need to say difficult things, so when you're busy, just say Kamunajiara Tamachi Hamayasi. In this way, it can be seen that Anasaburo Degachi, like Steiner, was hearing the spiritual grand sound echoing in the universe. Anasaburo Degachi was a great man who applied the theory of the word Kotodama of two Japanese scholars, Shidu Yamaguchi and Kotodama scholar Koto Nakamura. The biggest reason for this is that Anasaburo Degachi's grandmother was the daughter of Kotodama scholar Koto Nakamura, and it is said that he had already studied Kotodama when he was 10 years old. Anasaburo later recalled the time as follows. My grandmother was also born into the house of the famous Kotodama scholar, Koto Nakamura, so the formation of Kotodama was deep. From around the age of 10, I was occasionally explained the wonderful use of Kotodama from my grandmother's mouth, so I became interested in the study of Kotodama at any time and I lived in the mountains and thought about the absence of people nearby, and I shouted out loud with all my might, A, O, U, E, I, and so on. Furthermore, Anasaburo Degachi also met the Kotodama scholar, Misumi Oishigori, who had a grandfather who studied under the scholar of Japanese classical literature, Shidu Yamaguchi, when he was 27 years old. Also, Masumi Oishigori was a person who prophesied that Mithraya would be born in Japan by spiritually deciphering the Kojiki Japanese mythology and the Buddha's Mithraya Descent Sutra through Kotodama and divination. And it is said that his grandfather was a disciple of Koto Nakamura. Going back in time, the most well-known monk in Japan for his faith in Mithraya is Kobodishir, Kukai. He is a high priest who learned the Shingon esoteric Buddhism in China and brought it back to Japan. It is said that just before his death, Kukai told his disciples the following. I will now ascend to the heavenly realm where Mithraya Bodhisattva resides, watch over my disciples from there, and after 56.7 billion years, I will be reborn to save all Buddha's disciples with Mithraya Bodhisattva. About this Kukai, Anasaburo Degachi says the following. The Kotodama of Koto Nakamura, the founder of the revival of Kotodama, is close to one word, one meaning, and easy to remember. It became multi-meaning when it became Misumi Oishigori. The real Kotodama was used by Kobodesher, and the mantra is Kotodama. Kobodesher advocated the original meaning of the letter A, saying that A is the origin and everything appeared from A, but in reality, it came from Sudat. 
In this way, Kukai, who is deeply involved with Mithraya Bodhisattva, also had a deep understanding of Kodadama. It is also said that the Buddhism that Kukai is said to have learned in China about 1,200 years after the Buddha's death, and brought back to Japan, is a form of Mahayana Buddhism with elements of Hinduism and Yoga added. Also, in China, Zoroastrianism, a fire-worshipping religion, had also been introduced. Steiner also mentions the relationship between Zoroastrianism and the ether of words Kodadama. And it can also be considered that Shingon esoteric Buddhism, which uses spells and fire for prayers, was utilizing the ether of fire and light, and the ether of sound. On the other hand, Steiner, in his lecture The Mysteries of the Rosicrucian and the Age of Michael, states that the age of the Archangel Michael began in 1879. And while other archangels give impulses to humans, Michael is said to be a being that receives the results created by humans independently recognizing from a free state, brings it to the universe, and incorporates it into the evolution of the earth. Also, for this reason, he says that it is important for us humans to lead thinking through the language of letters to spiritual experiences. At the same time, he also talks about something interesting about letters, not just as symbols, but as important to sketch the form and deal with it objectively, as follows. For this reason, it may sound paradoxical today, but in a certain Rosicrucian school, they were forbidden to learn letters until they were 14 or 15 years old. They did not allow the form, the mechanism in the letters, to be put into the human body, and only after their own views were formed did they begin to learn the shape of the letters. And at the same time as learning the traditional letters used around them, they also learned their own Rosicrucian letters. These Rosicrucian letters were considered codes by people. Rosicrucian letters are not codes. You must learn other symbols, A, at the same time as A. By doing this, you are freed from the symbols, not sticking to one symbol. And it is understood that the sound A is a higher order thing than the symbols A and A. Otherwise, the letter A will be identified with the sound A that is emitted from our mouths and floats in space. From such a spiritual perspective, it can be felt that there is something in common with the fact that Shingon esoteric Buddhism uses Sanskrit, which is the source of ancient India, for Ajikan which is based on yoga in India. Furthermore, Anasaburo Degachi reads Lord as Su and writes it as Su from Kodadama. This is in the sense of putting more meaning than letters in the letters, and it is common with the Rosicrucian letter A spoken by Steiner. This can be said to be noteworthy. In fact, the character Su also contains the meaning of creation of the universe, and there are points of agreement in the views of Steiner and Anasaburo Degachi about it but this is very difficult, so I would like to omit it here. In the sacred garden of the Daihonkyo religion in Ayabi, there exists a pond called Kinryukai Golden Dragon Sea with two sections, one from recent times and the other from the past. This pond is said to symbolize the five primal sounds of Kodadama spirit of words, and five islands were created within it to represent these sounds. On the surface of the lake, ancient water stem characters' ancient script associated with Kodadama are said to appear. In 1919, a Kodadama pavilion was erected by the lakeside, and a Kodadama bell symbolizing the 75 sounds was enshrined there. Furthermore, within the Daihonkyo organization, a Kodadama core was formed. On October 12, 1942, Anasaburo Degachi, the founder of Daihonkyo, stated the following in his work The Mechanism of 0.1% is Kodadama. The Mechanism of 0.1% refers to Kodadama. It is about invoking this power. We practiced it within Daihonkyo. I dispatched Oni to Mount Omine and Mount Ibuki. From the peak of Mount Omine, he emitted Kodadama, causing a certain ship to sink. It is described as Michael stands and shouts, and all mountains, rivers, and trees respond. It sank the ship into the waves. Although people might call me crazy for saying such things. Additionally, 
The concept of the 0.1% mechanism Ichirin no Shikumi represents the idea that the gold deity of Ashitora Northeast will use 0.1% of its power to transform a world that has deteriorated to 99.9% .9 evil into an entirely benevolent world. The Kotodama Corps conducted exercises in 1919. On one occasion, they emitted Kotodama from a mountain in Ayabi City, Kyoto Prefecture, dispersing a storm. Another time, when the Kotodama Corps recited a purification ritual on a sunny day in Kyoto Prefecture, a sudden typhoon arose. On this occasion, Anasaburo Degachi utilized Kotodama from Kanagawa Prefecture to calm the storm, as recorded. Furthermore, Anasaburo explained animal cries and human words directed at animals using Kotodama. He stated, when you observe this, it becomes clear that all birds, animals, insects, and fish move, stop, advance, and retreat solely through divine Kotodama. This applies to all other creatures. In ancient texts, it is written that Michael stands and shouts, and all mountains, rivers, and trees respond. This is the truth. In the end times, true individuals who comprehend the practical use of Kotodama will manifest this power shaking the heavens and earth, controlling wind, rain, and thunder, and calming mountains, rivers, and trees. Ah, the marvelous application of Kotodama. Thus, Anasaburo Degachi considered himself a true individual who comprehended the practical use of Kotodama. He believed that he could stabilize and bring peace to the natural world using Kotodama. His anecdotes related to Kotodama are numerous, and he actively propagated faith by demonstrating the power of Kotodama. In addition to his spiritual endeavors, Anasaburo also contributed to the spread of Esperanto, a constructed international auxiliary language. He stood before the world, transcending language barriers, and worked to disseminate the truth. From all this, we can see that while Rudolf Steiner interpreted Kotodama in a Western context, Anasaburo Degachi fully embodied the characteristics of Mithraya Bodhisattva, as Steiner described. In this issue, we compared Rudolf Steiner's lectures with the testimony of Oinisaburo Degachi and examined their shared understanding of language. We also explored how Anasaburo Degachi effectively utilized the power of Kotodama the spirit of words in alignment with the characteristics of the Mithraya Bodhisattva, as prophesied by Steiner. In our next session, we will delve deeper into the parallels between Anthroposophy's sound ether and Anasaburo Degachi's Kotodama studies. Additionally, we'll continue our investigation into the hidden secrets of language that have been concealed within humanity. Thank you for watching until the end, and we appreciate your continued support.